So in this example, the question is like this: determine the result time with respect to point A. That means position of the resultant force we have to find out with respect to point A. Also, represent it as an equivalent force coupling system. This I have explained that in earlier videos. So first we have to find out the resultant force with respect to point A. Then we have transform the resultant force uh, to the point A. So that leads to a uh, force as well as a couple. That is why it is called as a force couple system. Now first let us find out the resultant force here in this example. He has given four forces: 50 kilonewton force acting along CD, 10 kilonewton force acting along the line DC, 12 kilonewton at an angle of 30 degrees with horizontal, and uh, another 12 kilonewton force acting at uh, 105 degrees. You can see here 30 plus 75. So total it is 105. 105 means uh, this angle will be uh, uh, 105 minus 90, which is 115. So that is uh, uh, 15 degree. You can take this as 15 degree. So now <coughs> here uh, 30 plus 75, 105, and uh, 105. This uh, total is 105. In that you have to get this 90 degrees. So you will be getting 15 degree. Correct. So, 15 degrees is the angle made by this 12 kilometer force with the vertical. Now, let us uh, resolve the forces first. Uh, so, <coughs> you need not resolve this 10 kilometer and 15 kilometer because they are horizontal and vertical. Only you need to resolve this uh, 12 kilometer force acting in the first quadrant like this. So, the angle is 30 degrees. Therefore, if you resolve, you are going to get the forces as uh, 12 cos 30 and 12 sin 30 like this. So this is the resolution. Next, we will resolve another 12 kilometer which is acting like this in the second quadrant. Please be careful here. This he has given making an angle 15 degrees with vertical. So therefore the angle with respect to horizontal will be 75 degrees. So that 75 degrees will take uh, the horizontal component which is something like this. So 12 cos 75 because 75 is the angle respect to horizontal and this will be 12 sin 70. So this is the resolution. Now we will write out, we will write sigma f x and sigma f y of all the forces taken together towards right positive. If I do that, so here 10 km is acting towards right, so plus 10. Then component of 12 km, this force is also positive because acting towards right, 12 cos 30. Components of this, uh, this component is negative because it is acting towards that so minus 12 cos 75. So this is the value of sigma fx. Sigma y will be upward forces positive, downward negative. So here this 15 will come into picture. It is given downward from minus 15. And this doesn't have a vertical component. This will be having a positive component of plus 12 sin 30. And this will be having uh, a also will be having a positive component so plus 12 sin 75 now the thing is if you simplify this uh, you will get sigma fx and sigma fy so sigma fx will be uh, just to you for 10 plus uh, 12 into 10 plus 12 into cos 30 then uh, minus 12 cos 75 minus 12 into cos 75. You should be very careful about the signs. So 17.286, 17.286 kilonewton. So force given this kilonewton. So it is positive, therefore it is acting towards right. Sigma f is acting towards right. Then sigma of y minus 15 plus 12 into sin 36. Uh, then plus 12 into sin 75 so you are going to get 2.59 newton kilo newton so this is also positive that means it is acting upwards so now once you uh, get the directions of sigma f x and sigma f y so since both are positive, sigma f x towards right, sigma f y upwards, so all will be in the first quadrant. 
and alpha is this. Now let us calculate the magnitude of a magnitude of resultant force. Magnitude of R is equal to R root of sigma f square plus sigma f square. So let us substitute the values. Magnitude of R is given by 17.286 square plus 2.59 square. So if you simplify this. Uh, you will get uh, so 17.286 square plus 2.59 square under root 17.4789 so 17.4789 into 10. So this is the magnitude of the resultant force. Then direction of our alpha direction of the resultant force or alpha tan inverse of modulus sigma fy by sigma fx which is given by tan inverse of sigma fy is 2.59 divided by 17.286 uh, modulus so you will be getting the value so tan inverse of 2.59 divided by 17.286 which is 8.52 degrees 8.52 degrees now we have got both magnitude as well as direction so and we know that power by the first quadrant now position we need with respect to point A so position of R position of R with respect to point A, so that we can take, we have to calculate sigma MA by taking clockwise moment positive and clockwise moment negative. Now be careful when you are taking the distances. Now we calculate the moments now due to this 50 kilometer about the point A, it is giving a clockwise moment. See the arrow, you have to move like this. 50 into distance is 3 meter, so plus 15 into 3 plus 15 into 3 then if you very careful here there are 3 forces this is a centimeter force of course extend the value of action it is also giving a clockwise moment about a 10 into distance is 2 meter for horizontal forces uh, distance is a vertical so plus 10 into 2 then due to this 2 kilometer force we have observed that so the horizontal component and vertical component like be careful so horizontal component is 12 cos 20, it is like this, it is giving a clockwise moment. So plus 12 cos 20 so into, I need the distance now. Distance is vertical distance. Vertical distance once again to this point C from A is 2 meter. For horizontal force, distance is vertical. Then coming to this force, 12 sin 30. So see here, 12 cos 30 is giving clockwise. 12 sin 30 is giving anti-clockwise to come to A. So it is minus 12 sin 30 into distance is horizontal distance. So from A to C horizontal distance is 3 meters. Now coming to this force, this perpendicular force I have resolved here. Horizontal component is I have given anti-clockwise. See here. So it is given anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise minus, minus 12 cos 75 into 2 meters. Distance is 2 meters. So minus 12 power 75 into 2 meters and vertical component of course it is also giving an anti-clockwise moment minus 12 sin 75 into 3 meters so for vertical force this is horizontal it is 3 meters now this, uh, this is the moment this step is very very important you should uh, uh, see twice whether you have taken positive negative correctly clockwise anti-clockwise distances are correct or not now if you simplify this you will get the value of sigma ma so 15 into 3 is 45 plus 10 into 2 is 20 plus 12 cos 30 into 2 that means uh, i can take it as 24 into cos 30 that is will be correct then minus 12 into sin 30 is half that is 6 so 6 into 3 18 it becomes 18 then minus 12 cos 72 means 24 into 
or 75 okay then minus 20 to 3 36 so minus 36 into sin 70 so this is what you get uh, you will get you will be getting 26.799 into 26.8 26.8 kilonewton meter of course you got uh, positive value increase which is clockwise only the resultant uh, is a clockwise uh, uh, suppose that means the moment at A is uh, 26.8 kilonewton meter clockwise now once you get that now you can find the perpendicular distance from the point A to the line of action of the resultant force D, sigma MA divided by R, modulus of that. So, sigma MA is 26.8 divided by R, magnitude of R is 17.48. 17.48. So, the value now is 26.8 divided by 17.48. 17.48, when it comes out to be 1.533 meters. 1.533 meters. So that is the distance of the resultant, perpendicular distance. Now I can show that in a diagram like this. So A is here. So resultant force acts in the first quadrant. See here. So it should be like this. And it should be here clockwise moment. So both the things you should uh, is important. Either it can be here or it can be here. It is like this or like this, above A or below A. Now, to get that, so this, if you take above A, it gives a clockwise moment, if you take below A, like this, it gives an anti clockwise moment. Therefore, the correct answer is uh, above A, because it, it is giving a clockwise moment. So, this is the resultant force, and this uh, angle is alpha, but with the x axis, that is alpha, and the distance D is this distance, perpendicular distance from the point A to the line of section of R. Okay. So this is the resultant uh, location. So now <coughs> distance of course is 1.53 meter that we have got. Now this what you have the second part uh, represent or uh, convert that to an equivalent force type of system acting at point A. So R is acting somewhere here at this point. So here if I take this as some point P, R is passing through P. So that point P, that force I have to shift to point A. So I know I have explained in the earlier videos how to transfer that. So I will take this point A here. Now what you have to do here is the same force you just get shifted to point A with the same direction. So R will act like this only with the same angle also. So this R is the value is uh, 17.4. 17.48 kilometer, which makes an angle of uh, alpha, which is 8.52 degrees. 8.52 degrees. Of course, it is not to scale. Now, in addition to this, if you shift that here, in addition to this, the couple also will act. The couple is nothing but sigma ma, which is clockwise 26.8. At the point A, so you have a clockwise couple ma of 26.8 kilometer. So this is the force of our system at the point A. So the resultant R is shifted to a force of our system, equivalent force of our system. That means the net effect of this and this is same. So without changing the external effect of the resultant, we can always shift the resultant force to the required point in order to introduce the moment at that point. So this is the force and this is the couple at the point A. So the, in this problem, we have found out both the things. One is, first step is, we have found out the resultant magnitude, direction and position. Then we have transformed that resultant force to a force couple system at the required point A.